Hello everyone, welcome to day 4th of March Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. The question that we have in today's Champagne Tower, here in this question we are given a pyramid kind of a structure made out of glasses. Champagne is getting poured at the top of the pyramid. We need to identify the amount of champagne that is present in the final state in the ith row at the gth index. So query row signifies the ith index, query glass signifies the gth index and the poured quantity signifies the total amount of champagne that is poured on this pyramid. Without further ado, let's quickly have a look at the presentation section and there I'll talk about the algorithm. So let's get started and we will exactly follow the stimulation as if we are actually pouring the champagne. Champagne tower, lead code 799. It's a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. So let's get started. Consider right now the total quantity of champagne that is given to us happens to be equal to 1. Then what is going to happen? It's pretty simple and straightforward. The entire champagne will get poured in the topmost glass with, and all the remaining glasses below this level will remain empty. It is also true till the time the total quantity of champagne that is given to us lies within or equal to 1. I think this is a basic case and all of you will agree with this. Let's proceed ahead. Next we have the total quantity as 2 units. What is going to happen? So in the first row, one amount of one unit of champagne will be poured and then we have to spill the remaining amount onto the lower levels. So what we are going to do, we'll consume one unit of champagne. So one unit of champagne gets consumed over here. What is the remaining amount of champagne that is left? So the remaining amount again happens to be one. So let's write one inside and one outside. The inside one signifies that it has occupied one unit of champagne and this signifies what is remaining for, for it to be poured in the lower levels. So the remaining value is one here and it will be equally split across the immediate two lower children, one on the right, one on the left. As a result of which both of them will get 0 0.5, 0 0.5 units of champagne and obviously since it's less than 1, there is no, the remaining turns out to be 0, 0. Pretty awesome and straightforward, no rocket science. I think so far we are good. Let's proceed ahead. We are making cases more interesting as we progress ahead. So here we have 3 units of champagne. Uh, it will be poured at the topmost level and as a result of which it will consume 1 unit. So let's fill 1 unit here. And what is the remaining quantity? The remaining quantity is 2. Now this 2 will be equally split across its left child and its right child. So what would be the quantity in its, on its left? The quantity on its left would be 1 unit because 2 by 2 gives me 1. So it has been completely filled up. The remaining corresponding to this index comes out to be 0. Again on the right side, 1 unit of champagne will be completely pulled up and the remaining corresponding to this index will again be zero. So far so good. Let's make the case more interesting. Now we have four units of champagne. So what is going to happen? Here at the topmost level, one unit will be consumed. Pretty simple and straightforward. So let's write one inside because one unit of quantity has been consumed. What is the remaining one? The remaining one turns out to be three. That simply signifies that three units will be poured on the down levels across these two. So let's get started and let's equally split three units across both its children. So it will get 1.5, 1.5 each in totality. Let's write one here because one unit will be consumed and 0.5 will be poured down to the lower levels. Similarly, one unit will be consumed and 0.5 will be poured down to the lower levels. So let's do the same thing again. Let's split this value across both the children, the right one and the left one. So 0.5 by 2 gives me 0.25. Since it's less than 1, the remaining for corresponding to this turns out to be 0. It's not completely filled up. Similarly, let's fill point it by 0.25 units. So it gets filled up with 0.25 units. Similarly, let's distribute this remaining 0.25 across both the children. So it will get 0.25 here, 
and again it will get 0.25 here it will be equally distributed uh, since it's less than 1 the remaining corresponding to this glass comes out to be 0 and it is only filled up with 0.25 units the remaining for the lower levels is 0 here similarly what is the value here 0.25 plus 2.25 gives us 0.5 as a result of which the final remaining quantity corresponding to this particular glass comes out to be 0 pretty awesome and straightforward we haven't done anything rocket science yes yet so let's proceed ahead let's start the stimulation for 5 units of glass so what we are going to do since the units is 5 uh, it will be filled by one unit and the remaining would be 4 4 would be equally split across its right and the left child so we get 2 2 units each we'll consume the entire glass since here in totality we are giving getting 2 units so one will contribute to remaining one will contribute to occupancy similarly here it will be split across two parts one for the occupancy one unit for the occupancy and one unit for the remaining one let's do the similar kind of a stimulation for the lower levels here the remaining quantity comes out to be one as a result of which what we are going to do we'll equally split it across the right child and the left child so we have in totality one unit so it will be split across its right child so uh, 0.5 will come here 0.5 will come here since it's lower than one so this glass will not be filled up fully it will be half filled 0.5 units the remaining corresponding to this one would be zero similarly here it would be 0.5 units again we have one unit remaining from here it will be filled in towards its left child and the right child so it will contribute to 0.5 units 0.5 units so far so good and in totality this glass will have one unit of champagne we are exactly following the stimulation process just keeping track of the remaining and the occupied quantities so let's proceed ahead next we have six units of total champagne and what we are going to do we will consume one unit and the remaining turns out to be five now this 5 is to be poured across its lower levels so we'll split it into two parts the, the left and the right one so the total quantity that will get poured to the left part is 2.5 and to the right part is again 2.5 what we are going to do we'll consume one unit and we'll pour the remaining one to the lower levels so here the remaining turns out 1.5 again similarly here one unit gets consumed and the remaining turns out to be 1.5 we will redo the same kind of stimulation 1.5 unit is to be distributed across its left child and right child so it will get 0.75 here it will get 0.75 here so what what we are going to do we will fill in this glass, glass up till 0.75 units since it's less than one the remaining corresponding to this one turns out to be zero here we will fill it upon 0.75 units and corresponding to this 1.5 units again it's going to split across 0.75 units 0.75 units the quantity here will be 0.75 units and the remaining will turn out to be zero however this is an interesting case since previously it was already filled 0.75 units again we are adding 0.75 units so the total quantity turns out to be 1.5 which exceeds the capacity of the glass as a result of which what we have to do we have to fill this glass full up till one unit and the remaining corresponding to this turns out to be 0.5 this 0.5 will be distributed across its lower level so let's write it up i forgot to show the depiction for the lower level but never mind let's split this 0.5 across both its children on the left and the right 0.5 by 2 gives me 0.25 so here we will get 0.25 here again we will get 0.25 and we are done with the iteration so here the total amount that is given to us is 7 what we are going to do we will consume one unit over here and the remaining turns out to be 6 6 is going to split across its left child and the right child so we have 3 here 3 here and let's fill in the amount that will be filled on its children uh, one unit will be consumed and the remaining turns out to be two one unit gets consumed and the remaining turns out to be two 
Again, let's split this two units across the left child and the right child. So both of them will get one one each. So one one each, both of them. Similarly, here we'll get one one each. And let's get the quantities for this particular level. One unit is getting poured into it, so it gets filled with one. The remaining corresponding to this will be zero. Uh, here on this glass, two units is getting poured. As a result of which, one will be completely occupied or consumed. and we have a remaining as 1 here we have one unit of occupancy the remaining turns out to be zero uh, we check at what all levels the remaining turns out to be greater than zero and we will simply pour it to the down levels we can only see this is happening in the middle index as a result of which we'll simply pour it towards the next level and here it will be 0.5 0.5 the remaining corresponding to these two glasses turns out to be zero and uh, that simply means that no more liquid will be poured to the down levels here the quantity is zero by default you can continue the stimulation for more such examples but what we are simply doing we keeping track of the remaining one and splitting across the remaining quantity across its left child and the right child so you are consuming the liquid you are calculating remaining and then you are splitting it across its children will exactly follow the same kind of stimulation in our coding section so let's quickly hop on to it so here i have created a double 2d array and the size would be 101101 why because in the question it is specified that the maximum a uh, number of uh, glasses that we can have and the rows that we can have is up till 100 so what i'm going to do i'll simply pull in the given quantity at the 0th level which is 0,0 Zero class at the zeroth row, and then I start the simulation. I is equal to zero. I is less than row count. J is less than zero. J is less than low count. What I'm going to do? I'll calculate the remaining quantity. What is the remaining quantity? You subtract one from the existing parent one, which is quantity at the i comma j index, and you find out the remaining one. You split it across its left child and right child. So i plus one comma j signifies its left child. I com I plus one comma J plus one signifies its right child. You divide the remaining by two into equal halves and add it to your lower levels. And once you are done with this, you have appropriately built your quantity two D array. 